So let's jump right into it. Let's discuss Maze Runner. Um, now, I'm the only person that saw it. Uh, none of the other two guys saw it. Um, so, like I said, Maze Runner, um, the death cure. I saw the first one. I never saw the second one. And watching the first one, um, I thought it was pretty good. You know, I thought it was interesting. Um, it was different from the other Y movies. It was kind of like this mystery. Um, this character, Thomas, who's played by Dylan O'Brien, um, he just shows up into like this maze doesn't know his name doesn't know who he is and he's you know with these kind of kind of has this uh, lord of the flies type aspect to it and a lot of these kind of cool elements of the maze and of these you know creatures that hunt them in the maze these tarantula mixed with spider uh, mixed with lizard type creatures um that that kill them when they're left in the maze overnight so that was kind of like this nice interesting element I was like, oh, that makes it, you know, a little bit more different from the other ones. Um, I never saw the second one. The second one, Scorch Trials. I never saw that one. I saw that one. Um, okay. Um, and when I tell you about this one, tell me if it's a little bit comparable sure. to that one. Um, so the premise of this one is that Thomas, who's played by Dylan O'Brien, again, he leads um, a group of, you know, a group of survivors, um, mainly to save the people who are being um, – being basically kidnapped from the evil group known as Wicked because Wicked is trying to use these young kids to find a cure for this uh, deadly disease that's, you know, wiping out the entire planet. Um, and specifically, they're trying to fr find their friend uh, Mihao, um, who's played by Ki Hong Lee, uh, who people might know him, you know, from the Maze Runner movies. Also, he was, um, he plays um, uh, Kimmy Schmidt's bro uh, boyfriend in Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. He's also in that show as well. Um, so they're also trying to specifically find him. Um, and that's really one of the main issues for me when it comes to the film is that they're developing a lot of resources and time to getting particularly this one guy back when, when they actually kind of lay it out. It's like, yeah, I know that's your guy and all, but I mean, we got other stuff to do. We got other people to help. Um, and you're devoting a lot of manpower and resources to help this one person. So I thought that was, uh, you know, kind of a little silly at, at that time. I thought, okay, that's a little silly. Also, coming into this series, like I said, I'm not big in a Maze Runner. Um, I like the first movie. I haven't read the books. I had zero investment in this story. Um, I thought a lot of it was really kind of dull and a patchwork of other better films. Uh, for instance, I mean, the post-apocalyptic element of this film, that's Mad Max. The zombie element of this film, that's 28 Days Later. I mean, the white, you know, something that started off kind of different, it just has moved into other YA films that we all know, like Divergent, like Hunger Games. There's nothing particularly special about this now, like how it first was. Um, I think that a lot of the film has lost those unique qualities. Um, I think it wastes a lot of really good actors. Uh, Walton Goggins, he shows up. They barely use him at all. Um, you have Aiden Gillen, who's basically Little Finger. He was Little, you know, Little Finger. People know him from Little Finger from Game of Thrones. He's Little he Finger. He will play that his... role to the day he dies. Um, which is a shame because I, I mean, I think he can do different stuff. Like if you see him when he's on The Wire, when he played the oh, main. He's... Yeah, he's a great actor. You know, really but, top notch. But he's stuck doing the basic villain role here, and the villain group Wicked. I mean, even though they have this stupid name, you know, Wicked, I mean, why would you trust <laughs> any, any group name like that? Um, you actually can kind of see where they're coming from because when they're actually kind of breaking it down, it's like, hey, we're trying to, yeah, we are kind of using these kids and, you know, experimenting on them, but we are trying to find a cure to this disease that is killing, you know, millions of people. It's like people are dying over here. Yeah, you know, and so i mean you can kind of see where they're coming from a little bit because they are trying to find this cure this find a thing that's gonna help humanity and save humanity you know so you kind of understand where they're coming from there it's like okay i get you and then um there's the character Teresa, who um so apparently uh that character in the second movie betrayed the group um because she in the first movie i remember her she was the only girl that popped up um, out of the out of the tunnel, 
and then right with the uh the words um if i remember correctly this is the last one yeah yeah because they apparently say so like their whole trials in the maze was stuff that helped them develop the cure like fight these antibodies i guess um and so she betrayed the group in the i guess the second movie and turned to wicked because she was all, all along undercover for them um and she's a doctor um, and she's trying to find a cure, and there's like a whole romance between her and the Thomas character. Um, that's also another thing, too, because he's also in love with her. I mean, you don't really, I don't really, again, I have zero investment in this. I have <laughs> zero, I, I don't really care about their love and about, you know, him, like, oh, she betrayed the group, and now there's tension between them, and does she still have feelings for him? I could really honestly give a fuck. I don't really care. Um, I think, you know, one of the positives about this movie, I think the movie opens up with a lot of fun. I think the, the opening action sequence is, is really good. They do a whole like train robbery type sequence. We're running out of time. You've seen what's happening out there. We're coming up behind! That was really fun. I thought that was really enjoyable. Um, I thought the scene where, um, uh, you know, where they're actually together hanging out, I think that's pretty fun. Um, and actually the whole cast of people, I think that's pretty nice. I mean, the whole cast of people is something different than you normally see in a YA film. You know what I mean? You got, you know, different kind of ethnicities, different, you know, cultures there going. Also, Nathalia Manuel's in this movie, criminally underused value of Nathalia Emanuel. How dare you have her in a fucking movie and you don't show her more than five minutes? I mean, she's gorgeous. What the fuck are you doing? Nathalia, uh, what, what's her last name? Uh, Nathalia Emanuel, who she was also in Game of Thrones. You got th actually three Game of Thrones actors in this movie because um, the guy who plays Newt, he's also a Game of Thrones actor and then Aiden Gillen and then Nathalia Emanuel. Um, oh, that's a shame. Yeah, so she's barely even in this movie. I was like, oh, you motherfuckers. That's the only reason I came to see this shit was for her and then she's barely even in this um and then walton goggins you know he's kind of this leader because they go to the city of actually wicked um to rescue me how um he kind of looks like the guy from uh, uh hannibal the guy who uh, was in the wheelchair if anybody knows what i'm talking about um you know because facial his face uh, face is all kind of destroyed from the virus um it's it's pretty freaky looking a little bit but like i said they waste him um, I mean, I've heard people who've even read the books are not even really, I think they, they don't even really follow the books that much anymore. Like, <laughs> the, the, like the people, so the people, the main audience of the people, the books, they don't, they're not even really that invested anymore in this. Um, so I mean, like I said, I, I think that the, the only really moment I really was that invested in was honestly was the opening sequence. And after that, it takes a sharp dip for me. I, I didn't really care about anything else in this movie. I was just like, wow, this is, I'm just so bored through most of this. Um, and I, I finally understand why uh, these henchmen can't hit shit like stormtroopers and then these people in this movie because, because their, their headgear is awful. How do, expect, how do you expect the villains in this movie to hit anything and they're wearing fucking beekeeper's mask over their face <laughs> like, well, that's why they can't hit the main guys because you give them these stupid costumes, and these stupid helmets, and they can't see. Like, Stormtroopers got these dumb helmets where their eyelids are all the way up to their forehead. It's like, yeah, of course, that's why they can't see shit. That's why they can't hit nothing. How about you, if you give them a helmet that they can see through, maybe they can shoot better. Because a lot of, you know, like the heroes in this movie, it's all sniper shot, sniper shot. You know, they, they call of duty level 42, and everybody else is still level one. And it's like, yeah, of course, because they can't see shit. So, that was the uh, that was a similar problem in uh, Thirteen Strong too. Uh, Twelve Strong. Know, Twelve Strong, you're right. Yeah. Twelve Strong. Yeah, that was yeah. Twelve Strong was a similar thing. All guys is just sniping everybody, but they they can't hit shit. Um, that's just a that's just a main problem of action movies nowadays. Yeah, I mean, at least let some guy get hit in the shoulder or leg or something, I mean, <laughs> you know. But I I mean. But you, I mean, if if this is what you're into, if you like the last two movies, I don't understand why you're coming into this and not like this one I, as well. Um, but 
I, I really wasn't that into it. I give it a thumbs down um, um, and tune out for me. It, I really didn't enjoy myself all that much. And I was really bored, honestly, through a lot of it. Um, I, yeah, it was it was super disappointing for me. Um, okay, so moving on from talking about Maze Runner, the Death Cure, I'm going to talk about. Oh, so so not even a rating, jeez. Yeah, I gave it a I gave it a thumbs down. I said tune out. Okay. Right, right, tune out. All right. Yeah. Well, um, you, uh, I had seen the sequel, so just letting you know, you, you didn't miss much. Mm, okay. Um. So was the the sequel Scorch Trial? Was that similar to what happens in Death Cure, or it, more of a? I would say. It's Thomas trying to figure out, oh, what are these wicked people really up to? What's going on? How am I going to get out of this? That kind of thing. Mm. Uh, but yeah, basically, it's the same kind of problem, sadly. Mm. Okay, yeah. Because um, uh, it did feel like Littlefinger was basically wasted. Yeah, I mean, because like, I mean, he's the you know classic mustache twirling villain, and like I said, you can kind of see where they're coming from if they weren't such dicks about it. And if Aiden Gillen wasn't firing on a crowd of protesters with missiles, it's like, well, could that what makes you look like a fucking asshole? If you didn't do shit like that, and if you didn't, you know, kidnap kids and have them, you know, in a train strung up and everything like that with the IV and all this, like, that's what makes y'all look like an asshole. Plus that in your group. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. You know, Wicked. It's like, why the hell would you name yourself Wicked, you know? Unless you're just a real big yeah, fan. Might as well just feel like, we're evil. The League of Evil People... Like, well, wicked awesome, man. Yeah. Wicked awesome. Unless you're wicked just hot, a, cool. Unless you're just a big fan of the Broadway musical, it's like, well, I'm just a big fan of the Broadway musical. That's what I named us after. It's like I think Littlefinger could pull it off. Yeah, you, you, I could see him Broadway. Yeah, Wicked Witch of the East. Yeah, he could pull that <laughs> off. No yeah. problem. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, him in a him in a, a long dress with a witch hat. I could see that. Yeah. I'd love to see it. Yeah. All right, so moving on to talk from talking about Major on the Death Cure. Hello, thanks for checking out our content. If you liked it, let us know. And if you didn't, let us know that as well. If you want to see more content, we post every Saturday on SoundCloud and YouTube at The Afternoon Tune. You can also find us through various social medias, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, all one word at The Afternoon Tune. And if you don't deal with any of that social media stuff, you can also find us through our email at TheAfternoonTune at gmail.com. And don't forget to always stay tuned.